Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, for your enlightening speech. Um, doctor, as we look at uh, the Muslim world today, uh, in general, and in particular, the Muslim countries, the, these countries are refused, actually refused, to implement the divine law in their administration. So as Muslim, we are required to become a true Muslim according to the teaching, to the true teaching of Al Quran. As said in the Allah decree in the Surah Al Baqarah, verses 208. Meaning, O you who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly and don't follow the footsteps of the evil. Okay. So in this context, what is your comment, doctor? And if you can give some advice to them. Thank you. Rather, as a question, that there are many Muslim countries which have majority Muslims, but they aren't implementing Islam as Sharia. And in this situation, we have all each country has its own problems and all pros and cons. And yes, there are many Muslim countries who have implemented the Sharia. And there are countries of two types. One which country which have Muslim majority, one country Muslims who claim that Quran is the constitution, the difference between the two. In countries where Muslims are almost all in majority, almost all, there's a difference between majority means even if you're 51% you're called a majority. 51% is also majority. But in countries where most are Muslims, what is my advice? I'd see, I am thy. I'm not a politician. I'm a thy. But Allah has blessed me that being a small person, being an insignificant person, Allah has given me the ni'amah, the blessing of meeting leaders, kings, sheikhs, presidents, chief ministers, alhamdulillah. And we as a thy, we do what we can in a limited capacity. I know today there are supposed to be 56, approximately 56 countries in which Muslims are in majority. <clears throat> some have proclaimed Islam as the religion. Some have proclaimed beside Islam as a religion, Islam, it as an Islamic country. Some have, some have not. I had the pleasure of being invited in 2014 in 2014, that's approximately one and a half year back. In November 2014, I was invited by the president of the Republic of Gambia. And when I got the invitation, I did not know Gambia existed in the world. So I saw in the map, where is Gambia? And I saw it is in between west coast of Africa and Senegal. So I checked up president calling me, so okay, so I gave him a date, okay, I'll come. And I went there for a week, similarly with the crew went there. And when I flew to Senegal, the foreign minister came to pick me up. When I landed on the airport, the full cabinet was there. I'm saying, what is this? When I went out of the airport, I saw a big queue of thousands of people at the airport for kilometers. I'm shocked, I don't know this country and Thousands of people, Dr. Zakir, Ahlan, Masailan. I never received such a reception anywhere before. And then I came to know the president, Al Haj Jame. He happened to be my fan. And I've gone to many 
king of Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, Sheikh Mohammed, many, many, many. The list is long. But the treatment I got here was something which is phenomenal. He gave me his own car without the number plate, Bentley and all. Then I realized that, fine, I went there. And I found that, alhamdulillah, he was a good Muslim. And in my talk, and I told him personally, the president, that why don't you make, and he told me that the population of Gambia was 90%. Because of Peace TV, today it is more than 95%. Peace TV is very popular. Because of you, the population of Muslims have become more than 95%. So I told him that Sheikh Al Hajj, president, why don't you declare this country as an Islamic country? He said, Inshallah, Inshallah. And in the lecture, I always kept on saying that. And Alham just, I'm doing my job. See, our job is to do zikr. Fazakr in the month of zikr. Our job is to deliver the message, changing hearts in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says to the messenger in Surah Jashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21, 22, Fazakr in the month of muzakir. For our job is to deliver the message. And Alhamdulillah, it was one of a phenomenal trip. I came back just three, four months back last year. After about 10 months, the president of Gambia declared his country to be the first Islamic Republic country in the whole of Africa. You know, he's my fan, and we as fans, I respect him. He's a good Muslim. I didn't go on and picking up things. Okay, why you did this? Why you did that? He respected me, I respected him. I gave him advice. And Alhamdulillah, he followed my advice. And today, though it's a small country, having a population of only 2 million, at least I can say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this small dai was instrumental in making one small country as an Islamic state, inshallah. And he's also appointed me as a religious advisor. And we are doing our job. As I said, the Muslims should be united. And when we meet people who are in the position, depending on the situation, if you, if you read the seerah of the Prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sometimes when he saw things which were wrong, he, he gave advice in a very beautiful manner. Sometimes he immediately rectified it. Sometimes with words, sometimes with actions, depending upon the situation. Now the situation that we, in, we as Da'is are, we try and say, but natural, it is the duty of every Muslim, as Allah has promised. I ended my talk with the verse of the Quran, which is repeated thrice. Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse number 33. Surah Saf, chapter 16, verse number 9. Surah Fatah, chapter 28, verse uh, Surah Fatah chapter 48 verse number 28 that Allah will make his deen prevail with or without you, with or without me the rubbish that you and me are we are nothing, Allah doesn't require you and me if I start thinking that Islam is spreading because I am doing dawah I am the biggest fool in the world Allah doesn't require me, what am I doing I am making hay while the sun is shining Allah has already promised his deen will prevail he doesn't require me he doesn't require Zakir Naik he doesn't require peace TV we are making hay while the sun is shining. We are trying to earn a profit's reward by doing a profit job. We are doing dawah. Allah doesn't require us. Whether the countries want or not, whether the countries want Islam to come or not, Allah will make it prevail. Now if you are instrumental in making Islam come, established as a deen, you will get sawab. If Allah has given you a position where you can be instrumental in making Islam prevail, you will get sawab. Whether we want it or not, Allah has given a promise and Allah always speaks the truth that Islam will prevail. Allah doesn't require me or Peace TV to spread Islam. Allah doesn't require anyone in this world to establish his deen. He is already promised. Now if a person is in position, when I give advice, a simple humble advice of mine to the president of Gambia and he accepted it after a few months, Alhamdulillah. Allah does not require anyone. We have to keep, Allah will ask you, did you follow the Quran and Sunnah? Allah will not ask you, why did you not make this deen as a religion of this country? Because you are not in that position. 
Allah will ask me that did I give advice to the people who I met? In my humble way, I try my level best with hikmah. We want to be effective as dais. And alhamdulillah, this is the beauty of Islam. That our job is to do zikr. Whether they follow or not, we will get our sawab. And inshallah, inshallah, what we find that inshallah, I believe that though the ummah is fragmented, we see signs that now we find the generation coming and we find signs that mashallah more women are doing hijab people are coming closer to the quran slowly slowly inshallah and when they come back to quran and sunnah again islam and the muslims would be on top of the world hope that answers the question my question would be regarding the four criteria that uh, a muslim 